Are we witnessing the end of America? Well, that just happens to be the title of a book by Jeff Kinley, The End of America. And uh, this is your latest book, Jeff. Welcome back to Prophecy Watchers. Thank Always you, good to see you. Good to be here again. Always a pleasure. And, and yet the, the subject at hand, as good as it is to see each other and talk about the things of the Lord, the subject at hand may be a little on the dark side. Mm. We all uh, are watching uh, political events, uh, social events, uh, we're noting what's happening in our schools and colleges. We're watching our society, and uh, this may well be uh, a very uh, apropos uh, question. Is it the end of America? Mm. So what view do you take? Mm. Well, America certainly is in decline. I think there's no doubt uh, of what's happening in our country right now, not only with uh, just the divisiveness that we've recently seen in places like Charlottesville and other places, this uh, anarchy, this chaos that's going on in our country, uh, but also we're seeing really a decline uh, spiritually uh, among Americans. It's very interesting that uh, George Barna just uh, put out a poll which recently said that um, less than half of Americans now are attending church. And uh, we think about European countries being like that, but now yes. Americans are attending church less and less and less. In fact, even those that call themselves uh, spiritually minded people are getting their truth or getting their spirituality from somewhere other than God's Word. Uh, and a recent poll also said that uh, the top ten places where you get your spiritual growth from, Gary, church didn't even make the top ten. Really? No. And so we're way down the list. And so what hap what's happening in our country is that, is that even those who think they're spiritual are now gaining their spirituality from other sources. And so we're spiritually in decline. More and more people are, are identifying with atheism, agnosticism, and secularism rather than with Christianity. Well, let's go back uh, about three years. Uh, Jeff wrote this book called Wake the Bride. Uh, I think in 2015, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, I remarked when I first read this book, it's one of the most readable books I've, I've ever mm -hmm. picked up. You've got a gift for writing that I just honestly admire. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and when I say a gift for writing, I mean it, he makes you turn the pages. And you don't even uh, laboriously have to wade through big words or anything else. He just pulls you along. And believe me, as a writer myself, uh, that's a gift. Oh, thank you. And your books are eminently readable. But you have a theme running through uh, your literature. You are uh, committed to the Christian idea, that, and you're committed to the, the biblical model mm. of life. And you're watching America right now. Mm. And we're all watching America and saying, can this really be happening right before our eyes? You know, you've got the white supremacists mm -hmm. and strange groups whose names you can't even pronounce mm -hmm. marching in the streets. And, mm -hmm. and after the last election, you had throngs of women in strange costumes mm -hmm. out there cursing in the public uh, venue. Uh, and, and we're all watching this together and we're saying, what in the world's going on? What can we do? What is happening within Christianity? And that's where you're focused. Yeah, and, and you know we see the world is in chaos, the country's in crisis, and the church, meanwhile, is asleep. We have to ask ourselves, you know, what is the church's role in this, and what do we need to do, uh, not only in our own country, but what's happening within the church that we need to address? And what I attempted to do in Wake the Bride was just simply to take a lot of confusing prophetic truths mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation and put them into an understandable language so that the average church member, the average Christian can really grasp these things. And I think a lot of times, Gary, we view the book of Revelation as sort of that untouchable yeah. book, uh, that place uh, that we dare not speak of, uh, and yet it's an accessible book to Christians. In fact, in fact God commands us to uh, dive into the book of Revelation, to read it, to hear it, to, to obey it. And so that's what I endeavored to do with Wake the Bride, is to take the reader through Revelation uh, really verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and help him or her understand not only what's going on but what's coming and how do we respond to it? How do we wake up so that we can be the bride that Jesus is returning for? 
Now, we are uh, in the world of Christian television, and we, we have a kind of, of specialty. We have a, a way of looking at the world. We're trying to present Bible prophecy to a, a wide audience and to, to educate. The other thing that we're trying to do is to create curiosity among those who are not really familiar with Bible prophecy, to make them uh, kind of enticed into looking at this thing and understanding what it is and in the process having a new relationship with Christ. Okay. I think Bible prophecy leads you to inexorably to Christ. It really does and one of the things that, that prophecy does for Christians is that it not only educates the Christian as to what's going to happen, but it stimulates the Christian yeah. as well. Because it tells us that, that God is in control, that history is His story, uh, Bible prophecy guards us against a lot of the false teaching that's out there today. There's a lot of speculation out there today, Gary, a lot of white noise concerning prophecy. And it just seems yes. like anyone with a, with a pen or anyone with a computer uh, wants to fancy themselves as a prophecy expert. And I think we have to be very careful about uh, what we read, about what we see, about what we hear taught, and to make sure we calibrate that with Scripture. Because once prophecy does land uh, in our hearts, it's a motivator. Yeah. Uh, prophecy has always been a motivator Amen. throughout history uh, for godliness, yeah. uh, to fall in love with Christ, to see the great grandeur of God and His sovereignty uh, over nations and over history. And so prophecy does so many things. In fact, I outline in the Wake the Bride 15 what I call the perks of prophecy, hmm. uh, the benefits that yeah. prophecy gives us I remember as believers. That. That's, that's great. And again, and I think you can catch a little of, of Jeff's heart in this matter. Uh, he's passionate about uh, life in Christ, but also what the Bible says about the times in which we live right now. You've got to be motivated. You used the term white noise a minute mm -hmm. ago. Uh, there's another term from from uh, the old radio days, static. Mm, you, yes. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> used to be you'd tune in the old radio and and you'd tune until all the static disappeared. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly. what we're trying to do, right? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. And, that, and that's really what Scripture does for us. It, it tunes us in. It, yeah. it allows us to sort of like those noise-canceling noise headphones, you know. It allows <laughs> us to kind of filter out all right. the distractions out there and get down to what does the Bible say. Because in the end, it really doesn't matter what Jeff Kinley says. It only matters what God the Holy Spirit says in His Word. And that's what I attempt to do in these books. And again, it's a rhetorical question. The end of America, well, the question mark, and you're asking that, not necessarily saying it's the end of America, right. but you're pointing to certain things that are happening. Uh, let's talk about public entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, movies out there that are absolutely unwatchable. Mm -hmm. There are others that are semi-watchable. There are some that claim to be spiritual movies, but they really lead you away from Christ and not to Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, so public entertainment... Mm -hmm which is a big part of life, right. is compromised. And you, you talk about that quite yeah. a bit. Well, absolutely. I mean, the entertainment that we see in our society is merely the, uh, the outgrowth or the outflow of the hearts of a depraved country, of a depraved society. And so you would expect really nothing else to come from a darkened heart and a darkened mind. You know, in Romans chapter 1, Paul says that once you reject God as creator and you suppress His truth, mm -hmm. then God says that you are given over to foolish speculations and their, and their foolish heart is darkened. And so there's a, almost a penalty of darkness that comes when we reject the creator. And so the writers, the producers, the actors, the, the people who are funding a lot of the entertainment in our society today merely reflects the darkened heart of our society. You know, I, I have my Bible open to um, 2 Timothy chapter 3 where Paul says this, Know also that in the last days mm -hmm. perilous times shall come. We've talked a lot about that mm -hmm. verse. We've probably talked it in, into complete boredom. So many people have come to understand that, that they don't really look at it. But if you read down a little bit to the 10th verse, hmm. Paul says to Timothy, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, hmm. charity, patience. And he says, you know how I live. Hmm. And also, Timothy, you know what I have gone through. He goes on then to, yeah. to kind of re remember Mm -hmm. All of the horrific things that happened to him while he was preaching Christ. Yes, um, that's something good to remember. 
It is. And, and I think that in evangelical Christianity today, there's sort of this unspoken mantra that, that the point of my faith is to feel good about myself. Yeah. The point of my faith is to me to have a happy, comfortable life. And, uh, and that's why you have books like The Shack uh, that are written in sort of this syrupy, uh, ooey-gooey, reimagining God kind of thing. And uh, I call them the Shack Christians because uh, they're doctrinally deficient, Gary, and we, we have a generation of people, tens of millions of people are, are swallowing an image of God that we don't see in Scripture. And that's why in that very mm -hmm. book and in the books that Paul wrote to Timothy, over and over again Paul says, Timothy, I remind you of the sound doctrine. Retain the sound words. Right. You know, people are going to fall away from the faith. Preach the Word. And that tells me that doctrine is not just something that we put on a document and we say that we believe. Doctrine is something that, that really works itself out in all areas of our lives. And so that's why we have to call the church back to that sound doctrine. You know, I, I, I had to go see the shack to see what all the shouting was about, you know, and see what the doctrinal stance was and so mm -hmm. forth. And i got to admit, the shack mm -hmm. presents a very, uh, what should I say, enticing, emotional mm -hmm. picture very attractive, you know. Oh, wow, this is wonderful. You know, my heart is, heart rate is slowing down and I'm at peace, you know. It's, in other words, it projects something we would all like to live in, right. a, a kind of an emotional mm -hmm. uh, peace right. that people are looking for. Yeah. And not to be confused, by the way, with doctrine. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the problem. Uh, and again, it, we have a, a this challenge as, as preachers and teachers, and that is we do want to, to uh, profess sound doctrine, but we also want to uh, project that peace mm -hmm. that comes through a faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and what we see in our society today is that even in the church we've, we've taken the truth about the comfort that God gives us and the peace that He gives us, and we've sort of perverted that uh, to mean something that it actually doesn't mean in Scripture. You know, God is a comforting God, but He's also a confrontational uh, God as well. That's true. And so nowadays what we have is, is this uh, morphing Messiah, if you will, this Jesus that sort of fits our own taste buds. And uh, we allow Christ to, to kind of be what we want Him to be instead of what He says He is. Well, doctrinally, uh, there, for example, is a denial of hell or mm -hmm. hell fire or eternal mm -hmm. punishment. Mm -hmm. And we've all noticed in the past few decades you know, kind of a turning away from anything that might be considered dark or unattractive mm -hmm. and, and a movement toward uh, the things that, that naturally allure mm -hmm. people. And, and I, you, you address that mm -hmm. in, in, this, in this book. But again, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff's latest book, The End of America. Is it the end of America? A good discussion point as we all watch what's happening to our country and we say, oh, surely it couldn't go any farther mm. than this. Mm. Eh, it'll go just so far and then no further. Everything's going to be all right, right? right? Right. Yeah, I think as Americans we kind of think we're sort of immune or invincible yes. uh, to, uh, to collapsing. And yet, you know, David said in Psalm 90, 12, Lord, teach me to number my days that I may present to you a heart of wisdom. And what's good for humans is also good for a country. It's good for us to contemplate our own mortality, to realize that we may not be here forever. Uh, even if we live 70, 80 years, there's still an end to this thing. And so as we think about America and how she might come to an end at one point, that's a good thing because it causes us to recalibrate where we are and to begin to live with great wisdom in our country. Just looking at your book, and you ask some questions in this book, how did we get to this point in America? Question number one. Question number two, uh, is America in Bible prophecy? Question number three, will Christians face widespread persecution here? Mm -hmm. uh, all good questions, and I, I'm stopping short of asking all of them, but what do you do with these questions? Is America in Bible prophecy? Are we going to see persecution mm -hmm. here? Yeah. In fact, I have a whole chapter on uh, the coming persecution that I see in America because, I mean, right now, Gary, there are 65 countries in the world that are actively persecuting Christians. Wow. Nine out of the top 10 countries that are persecuting Christians have a greater population of 50% more Muslim. So the greatest uh, area or the sources of persecution in the world are coming from uh, Islamic countries. 
But we as Americans, because of our Christian heritage and because of the fact that government and society for so many years has backed us up, so to speak, in a Christian worldview, we've sort of gotten a buy on this thing. I mean, it's God bless America, I pledge allegiance to the flag, prayer in the schools and all these things. But once these things start be eroding, uh, become eroding from our society, then things are kind of turning against us. The church is becoming more and more marginalized. Uh, if you speak up against uh, some, some immorality or you speak up for a traditional marriage, you're going to be crucified on social media. Now those are kind of light persecutions, but we're beginning to see it kind of ramp up and the, and the flame and the fire get a little bit hotter with these lawsuits against those uh, people who have come out to say, I'm not going to bake a cake for a gay wedding because of my Christian conscience. Uh, we have professors being fired uh, from university positions because mm-hmm. of their stand on creation. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different things that we're beginning to see. And whether or not we'll get to the point where we're experiencing what other countries are is yet to be seen. But I do believe that that persecution is going to ramp up and heat up in the days ahead as our society continues to devolve into madness. Now, let me ask you a personal question. What do you, Jeff Kinley, plan to do as this develops? What's going to be your response? Yeah. Well, there's a couple things. Uh, For me personally, I think one thing is to realize that I am a pursuer of God first, a patriot second. Now, I love my country. Don't get me wrong. I'm red, white, and blue. You know, I bleed that way. My firstborn son's a graduate of West Point. He's a captain in the Army. We're a patriotic family love my country. However, I have a greater allegiance. And my allegiance is to heaven and to heaven's mandate. You know, Paul said in Philippians 3.20 that our citizenship is in heaven. Mm. And when I put my hand over my heart, my first allegiance is to the God of heaven. Uh, But I have to understand that because my life is hidden with Christ and God, Paul tells us in Colossians 3, is that we are to set our mind on the things that are above. And Gary, that's an issue of priorities. So for my personal life, I have to make sure as a Christian that my priorities are set straight, that I am Mm -hmm. pursuing Jesus Christ on a daily basis. And I think secondly, I was on a radio show here recently where a lady called in and said, what am I supposed to do in light of all this thing? And what I said to her was this. I said that we all have spheres of influence in our Mm -hmm. lives. You may not be able to go out and change Washington, D.C. or change your whole community, but you do have friends, you have relatives, you have co-workers, classmates, people with whom you have influence those are the people that are your mission field. That's the America for you. So be that salt, be that light for those people and let God use you in your own context. You know there's never been a better time to be salt and light mm-hmm. than right now. Right. And uh, you know the going is getting just a little bit rough. The winds are coming up, there's a little buffeting, you sort of pull your coat up around you, right. you know, but keep going. That's right. And, and yeah. you do. Absolutely, because the darker the night, the brighter the light. Mm. And as we continue to shine for Jesus Christ in this, now obviously the light sometimes gets in people's eyes, they don't want you to, to shine the light. But at the other time it illumines, it guides people, it shows them the way. And in, a, in an age where our country and our society is lost and they're struggling for direction, Christians are the ones who are the torchbearers to hold the light of the gospel of Jesus. Now, I'm going to make a little turn here, and I want to ask Jeff a question that he asks. Uh, Again, the book is The End of America, question mark. And on the back of this book, there's a question. What effect will the rapture have Mm. on America? Really interesting, thought-provoking question. Uh, Christians are waiting for the rapture, pre-tribulation rapture of the church. We're looking up, moment, the twinkling of an eye. And we're all saying, wow, this could happen any time, and I really believe it could, what effect will the rapture have on America? Yeah, well number one I have to say uh, definitively I believe in the rapture, I believe in the blessed hope uh, because uh, the rapture has taken a lot of heat uh, yeah. here recently in recent years with a lot of uh, people who are coming in and saying this is all it's just a Johnny come lately sort of belief yeah. and that type of thing and I address that extensively in Wake the Bride but I believe that if America is teetering on the edge of complete collapse that the rapture will be the event that causes her to just fall off the edge of the cliff. And here's why. Uh, If there are 300 million Americans uh, in our country today, Mm -hmm. it's estimated that about 10% of those are identifying as evangelical Christians. 
if that's true and the rapture happens as we believe it will, that means that some 30 million people are going to vanish uh, from this country. And that's not just 30 million, million people living out on farmland in North Dakota somewhere. That's people all over our country in every area of yeah. society, in medicine, in the arts, in government, obviously in, in religion, in the Christian church, um, in all areas of society. Police departments. Police I know the military. Uh, many, many police officers who are, are very active Christians. Absolutely. And, and imagine the impact when all of those people are removed from every strata of our society. I mean, the collapse is going to be catastrophic. And I believe this will be one more judgment on America when God basically, in effect, says, I'm removing the influence of my Holy Spirit in your country. No longer will there be anyone to speak up for marriage or for the unborn or against homosexuality and for what's right. Uh, no one will be preaching the gospel in America. Pulpits uh, will, many pulpits will be empty. And so the catastrophic impact of the rapture I think will be the death knell, the final nail in the coffin of America that will cause her to go into complete collapse. And that's a very interesting thought. Uh, again, it, it would be God's judgment uh, to, to pull the salt and the light out of society and right. say thus far no farther. Yeah. Uh, we also have the idea of fullness, uh, mm -hmm. as in the book of Romans, mm -hmm. when the fullness of the Gentiles yeah. is arrived at, suddenly everything will change. Absolutely. God and has a particular uh, criterion that we don't understand. Yeah. We do. when, when we arrive at that, it'll all happen. Right. And when the fullness of the Gentiles has arrived, then that, that I believe will coincide with the event that we call the rapture. And I, and I postulate on this in the book, The End of America, about have you ever thought about the fact that someone's going to be the last Gentile to be saved? Wow. And who's that person going to be? I mean, will it be someone listening to a broadcast like this? Or will it be someone uh, crying out on their deathbed in the hospital? Or a young person at youth camp? Or, or some drug addict at rehab crying out to God in his last breath? Or someone maybe perhaps thinking about taking his or her own life. We don't know who the last Gentile will be, but there will be a last Gentile where that angel will be ready to blow that trumpet, the trump of God, and to usher in the return of Jesus for His bride. So that, for many other reasons, economically, think of the economic impact the rapture will have on the country with mortgages defaulting and everything else. So it will be a major event for our country. Jeff's book is a, a very... Uh, serious look at what's going on in America right now, but it's also written to motivate. And uh, as we're drawing close to the end of our time today, I just I wanted to, to focus on that mm. because you do really have a gift, I think, for motivating mm. people, uh, kind of stirring up the, the the emotions a little bit and say, hey, let's uh, let's get back into the battle here. Mm -hmm. That's part of your motive, if if not the main thing. Absolutely, and it has to be because the Bible is a book of hope. Uh, the Bible doesn't just tell us the truth and some of the dark things are going to happen. The Bible tells us what we're to do about it. I think about uh, World War II and the beginning of World War II in Great Britain when there was so much darkness uh, in Europe and uh, Hitler's war machine was, was steadily making its way towards England. And uh, I recall a speech by uh, Winston Churchill uh, where he called on uh, the people of Britain to stand and to fight, to fight in the streets, to fight in the landing grounds, to fight on the beaches. Because he said, if we were to last a thousand years, we'll look back and say this was our finest hour. Mm -hmm. I believe now is a great opportunity for Christians to rise up and be the body of Christ, to be salt and light, because I do believe this is the greatest time to live, Gary. And this mm -hmm. could be, well, our finest hour in 2,000 years of church history right now. But it's going to take the church waking up and get busy. Jeff has written uh, Wake the Bride, which we have carried here at Prophecy Watchers for, for quite a while. Uh, now accompanied by uh, his new book, The End of America. And he has co-written another book, a third book, which we're going to talk about on another program. Uh, you've co-written this with Mark Hitchcock, and it's called The Coming Apostasy. And uh, uh, the, the word apostasy... Uh, is I suppose if you're not a Christian, that word would not be really familiar to you. Uh, what are you talking about there? Well, it's not a word people use in society at the grocery store today is the word apostasy. You don't really hear about it even in the church nowadays. But the word apostasy, apostasy simply means to fall away. It means to depart from something. 
And uh, Scripture tells us that uh, in the last days there will be a great falling away from the faith. And so Dr. Mark Hitchcock and I uh, examine what is going on in the church today and, and uh, how that could uh, relate to modern prophecy. As we do here at uh, Prophecy Watchers, we, we sell things in packages. <laughs> and it's to your advantage because uh, it, it gives you more reading material at a, at a better uh, cost. And we have here what we're calling the American Apocalypse Package. Wake the Bride, the End of America, and the Coming Apostasy. Uh, all uh, three books, yours, for a very special uh, price. Check us out, prophecywatchers.com. Click on the online bookstore, go down to Jeff Kinley, and you'll find the American Apocalypse Package. By the way, uh, you can call the 800 number on your screen. Just give us a call. We'll be there. Tell us what you need. Uh, and, and don't forget to ask about the American Apocalypse Package. Uh, the one thing that I really like about Jeff's books, and I don't say this about very many people, I appreciate good writing. Uh, there's, it's a gift you can't teach. It's like a virtuoso violinist, somebody that can just go all over that instrument and you, you, you're just jaw-dropping when you see a virtuoso violinist. And you can't teach that. You're born with it. You either got it or you haven't. Well, Jeff, when it comes to words on paper, is a virtuoso writer. And, I, and I'm not exaggerating. He's got the gift and you'll love reading his books. Well, Gary, thank you for saying that. My my burning passion is to put God's truth into a language that people can understand. And so that, that's a great compliment. I'd like to close in about a minute uh, on a question that I think we'll open up again in our next broadcast. And that is, uh, what's going on in the churches today? Uh, I, I know you well enough to know that you would really like to get into the churches to sort of light the fire in the church and, 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 and restore that, uh, that old vigor and that, uh, that um, what should I say, the motivation to get back out there and preach the gospel. Uh, and I think that's most of your motivation for writing these books, right? It really is. My, my heart is to really help believers uh, to understand what God's Word says and to live lives of meaningful purpose, to live with urgency but with purposeful, purposefulness as well, and to make sure that we're hitting the bullseye with our spiritual lives. And you can't do that when you're asleep. You've got to be awake to do that. So you're waking the bride. Amen. The bride of Christ, the church. Uh, and we'll be talking to Jeff Kinley again, uh, but the time just flies when we're talking with him because uh, there are so many interesting things. We'll touch on those in our next broadcast. Jeff Kinley, always writing, I imagine. <laughs> Just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> or trying to. Right. Which, by the way, requires discipline. That's right. I understand that. Uh, it's been great, Jeff. Thanks for coming by Prophecy Watchers. My pleasure, Gary. Thank you. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you just keep watching out there. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.